Hi everyone, this is Masood from Bygone Chronicles and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for all your encouragement, feedback and comments with regards to my last video where I had hosted my friend Harsha, Dr. Harshwardhan Yadamurthy, where we spoke about the different images of Tipu Sultan and tried to find out why they all look so different and which one of them is the actual depiction of him. The overwhelming feedback which I got was that the talk was fabulous, the first ever of such kind, very interesting. However, on the flip side, it was very long and I do agree with that. A lot of you requested if I can make another video covering the same subject but keep it condensed and summarize the various images of Tipu Sultan and the result of the discussion. My good friend and Tipu scholar Nitin Olikara came up with a brilliant suggestion that if I can do a presentation using PowerPoint with voiceover, it would be great. So here I am with the presentation where I'll take you through all the images which I discussed with Harsha. The first image which we looked at was this. Uh, it is the photo of what appears to be an African gentleman. Harsha dismissed this image saying that photography wasn't invented until the late 1820s, early 1830s. And Tipu, as we know, passed away in 1799 during the Fourth Anglo-Mysore War. So this is definitely not an image of Tipu Sultan. So the question arises, if not Tipu who? Well, we found that uh, this is the photo of Muhammad bin Khalfan, uh, commonly known as Rumaliza, a prominent slave trader of Zanzibar in the 19th century. He also later became uh, the Sultan of Ujiji. These places, Zanzibar, Ujiji, are in Tanzania. The next image that we looked at was this, spread again widely on social media as Tipu Sultan. However, a job was made easy as we had already discussed that the first photo wasn't taken until late 1820s. So this again being a photograph could not be Tipu Sultan. Also from the image, apart from being a photo, this gentleman appears in his late 50s or 60s and we know that Tipu Sultan lived between 1751 to 1799, so he did not even reach 50 years. Uh, this image is in fact of Tipu Tip, uh, his real name being Hamad bin Muhammad, who was again a Swahili Zanzibari slave and ivory trader. There is also a book on him. Uh, it is also interesting to know that both Tipu Tip and Rumazila are contemporaries and knew each other. Uh, in fact, it is said that Tipu Tip helped Rumazila become the Sultan of Ujiji. The third image that we looked at was this painting. This was a bit challenging as the image was titled as Tipu Sultan by two very prominent institutions, the Columbia University in New York and the Royal Academy of Arts in London. The Royal Academy of Arts in fact gave a very detailed description on the prominence of this image. It mentioned it to be a portrait of Tipu Sahib with the name of the engraver John Cochran and painter William Daniel. However, this was dismissed as not being Tipu Sultan because of the following reasons. Uh, the big palatial building seen in the background is nowhere seen in Mysore or Seringapatam. The painter William Daniel never visited Mysore. However, he did visit North India and other parts of India. The dress as well, the fur coat is foreign to Mysore people and Mysore royalty of the 18th century. And most importantly, Harsha informed that a friend Charles Andrew Gray, who is an art historian, found this image to be of Himayun of Mughal dynasty in the book The Oriental Annual or Scenes in India by Reverend Counter. I then decided to email this organizations so that they could correct the provenance and I found this image in the 1838 edition, the fifth edition of the Oriental Annual or Scenes in India by Reverend Counter. Mr. Adam Waterton, the librarian at Royal Academy of Arts, responded to my email and had it corrected in their collection and on their website. Moving on to the next two images, we first looked at this image, which is an engraving by J. Pass. Harsha pointed that this is from an earlier painting by Henry Singleton, 
where it is shown Tipu Sultan sending off his sons to Lord Cornwallis after the Third Anglo-Mysore War. However, it's worth noting that Henry Singleton never visited India and his painting is based on his imagination and from talking to people who knew about this event. However, there is an accurate depiction of this scene by Robert Holm, who was present in Mysore at that time, but in which Tipu is not seen. We dismissed both these images of Henry Singleton and the engraving by J. Pass as not a faithful or accurate depiction of Tipu Sultan, as none of them had been to India or seen Tipu Sultan. It is also worth noting the headgear, the jewellery around the neck of Tipu Sultan seen in this image is unheard of and points that this painting is based on a figment of imagination. We next looked at this large portrait of Tipu Sultan seen at his summer palace in Seringapatam, the Darya Daulat Bagh, which is on the Ganjam side and put up by the Archaeological Survey of India in his palace. The image is also found on the cover pages of many books on Tipu Sultan, uh, Mysore, Serengapatam. A lot of people think this is how Tipu looked when he was young. The image is attributed and said to have been painted by Johann Zofni in 1780. We also have a reference for this in the book The Heritage of Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan, Art and Architecture. Talking about the history of this image, this portrait was presented by Sir P. C. Tagore in 1934 to the Government of India and hung at the Viceroy's house, which is the Rashtrapati Bhavan. Later on, it moved to Darya Daulat Bagh. However, when we look at other paintings of Johann Zofni, to whom this image is attributed to, his style of painting is very different to what is seen in this image. His paintings are mostly conversation pieces where multiple people are interacting with each other and people are shown with a lot of expressions and emotions on their faces. It is also worth talking about another painter, Tilly Kettle, whose style of painting matches this image. We usually see the subject shows no emotion, looks straight ahead at the visualizer, the background is simple and we see palm trees usually, which he incorporates in his paintings. Let us look at examples of both Johann Zofni and Tilly Kettle, who were contemporaries and painted during the same period. Here is an example of Johann Zofni painting, the family of Sir William Young. A lot of people around hustle bustle interacting with each other with varied expression on their faces. Here is an example of a Tilly Kettle painting, Portrait of an Officer. Another example by Tilly Kettle, the painting of Nawab of Arcot or Nawab of Karnatic, palm tree seen in the background, subject looking straight and no much emotion seen. Here is another painting, Portrait of Shijaud Daula, rendered by Tilly Kettle. Tilly Kettle arrived in 1768 and was in Madras for two years. He was then invited by Shijaud Daula, the Nawab of Aud. He made portraits of uh, Shijaud Daula, his family, uh, court notables during stay at his court. Getting back to the Darya Daulat portrait, whose image is it? Is it Tipu Sultan? Well, the answer to that is found in another painting of Tilly Kettle. There is an interesting painting by Tilly Kettle where he depicts Shah Alam inspecting the troops of East India Company while in Allahabad. The black and white image was seen by Harsha in Milrod Archer's book. The color image is seen in William Dalrymple's latest book, The Anarchy, which we will look at in the next slide. We can see the color version here, which is much better. If one observes closely, there is an interesting character on the left side of Shah Alam, who resembles very much the portrait of Tipu Sultan at the Darya Daulat Bagh. On closer inspection of the Darya Daulat portrait and the character in the Tilly Kettle painting 
show in Shah Alam inspecting troops of East India Company, we note that both these individuals are same. The face is a mirror image, the posture is the same, the dress and headgear is of identical fashion. So a question arises, what is Tipu Sultan doing in Allahabad, siding with the Mughal Emperor Shah Alam? We know that Tipu Sultan never visited Allahabad or North India and never met Shah Alam in person. So we can conclusively prove that this is not the image of Tipu Sultan at the Riyadhulad Bagh. So a question arises, whose image is it? According to Harsha and Charles Andrew Craig, it is likely the image of Mirza Muhammad Ali Salar Jung, the brother-in-law of Suja Uddawla, the Nawab of Oud. We know that Tilly Kettle spent considerable time in the court of Oud painting court notables, so he could have made this portrait of the brother-in-law of Suja Uddawla, which he also uses in the Shah Alam uh, painting. So we now note that both the attribution to the painter jo Johann Zofni and the subject Tipu Sultan is incorrect. So we next move to the painting of Tipu Sultan by G. F. Cherry, rendered in 1792, one of the oldest images circulating as Tipu Sultan. So is it an actual depiction of Tipu Sultan? Yes, this is considered as one of the most authentic images of Tipu Sultan. Rendered by Cherry, who was Persian translator and secretary of Lord Cornwallis. The painting was gifted by Cornwallis to Tipu Sultan's mother and later gifted back from his son Prince Ghulam Mohammed to the East India Company. Cherry could have most likely seen Tipu Sultan. And being with the family of Tipu Sultan adds credence to this image. The description of Tipu Sultan also matches the painting rendered by G. F. Cherry. We know that a lot of British officers saw him on the date of his death and contemporary records describe Tipu Sultan as having tawny complexion, dark grey eyes, arched eyebrows, uh, aquiline nose, having a moustache but no beard. Moving to a final image, a watercolour gouache by an anonymous Indian artist rendered around 1790s, very similar to G. F. Cherry's version. However, there is a debate if this was based on G. F. Cherry's version or G. F. Cherry based his painting on this version, uh, but a good actual faithful depiction of Tipu Sultan. And before I conclude this presentation, I would like to thank all the contributors behind this project who were the ones who actually strived and researched and got all the information on the subject. Dr. Harsha, who is a doctorate holder in biochemistry and also has a very keen interest in history and deep knowledge about paintings. He himself being a painter come artist. He was the one who observed that the painting portrait at Darya Dalut has a striking resemblance with the character found in the Shah Alam rendition by Tilly Kettle. Charles Andrew Gray, a leading scholar and art historian of British India who found the reference to the Himayun's painting in the Oriental Annual or Scenes in India by Reverend Counter, and was very convinced that the image at Darya Dalit Bagh was not by Johann Zofni but by Tilly Kettle. He is also an author and has recently authored a book titled The State of Major General Cloud Martin at Lucknow. And finally, Nitin George Olikara a numismatist, a bibliophile, scholar, researcher, and historian, an authority on Mysore history, especially under Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan. Nitin George Olikara keeps us all motivated and supports us with our endeavors and research. He held regular discussions with Harsha on this topic and provided him with a reference on the G. F. Cherry's image, which was gifted to Tipu's mother. Nitin has also recently discovered the correct date of birth of Tipu Sultan from Tipu Sultan's own writings, which is 1st December 1751 as per the Gregorian calendar. Thank you very much for watching and please do leave your comments, feedback and suggestions and do like and subscribe to my channel Bygone Chronicles. You can also visit my website bygonechronicles.com. Thank you once again.